This video is one part tutorial, one part hands-on review with the new Fuji GFX 100S and its 80 millimeter 1.7 lens. What's up guys, my name is Pi. Welcome to SLR Lounge. So look, in my review of the GFX 100S, I wanted this to be hands-on to give you guys thoughts on the camera, the lens, but along the way, I thought it'd be more fun to build this into kind of a tutorial. So I'm gonna give you a guide and kind of walk through each of the shots that we're gonna be creating so you can learn not only about the camera system, but also about how we're shooting the shots that we're taking. So let me go ahead and introduce our lovely model. This is Saran. Saran, why don't you go ahead and share your Instagram Hi. handle? My Instagram handle is at Lauren Shagley. Saran, Lauren Shagley. Is there a story here? It's a stage name. Stage name, okay. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with our first scene. Now this is my first time powering up this camera and using it. I wouldn't recommend that necessarily going into a professional shoot, but I like doing that and unboxing, kind of feeling the experience under pressure, just to see like, is it easy to navigate? Is it easy to actually use the camera and just to jump straight into shooting? So uh, Lauren, Saran, let me go ahead and have you stand right here. I'm gonna start with something simple. So what I'm looking to do right now is medium format is known for crazy depth of field, especially when you pair it with an 80 1.7 lens. So we're gonna play with a little bit of depth here and, uh, and see this kind of foreground and leading into Saran in the background. Um, so first things first, let's figure out how to get to the right exposure. No, you know what, first things first, let's figure out how not to shoot 250 megapixel, no, 250 megabyte 100 megapixel raw files. So I'm gonna dive into the menu system and just see, okay, very first thing, image quality settings. So the first thing I'm gonna do, check this out. This is lovely because if I shoot large on my image format, I'm gonna get 370 images before I fill up a 128 gig card. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that over to medium. So that's 50 megapixels, 51 megapixels. I'm also gonna shoot super fine JPEG plus raw. So that's right underneath there. It's so easy to pop into the menu and choose these options. Film simulation, all right. This is one of my favorite things about Fuji systems is uh, not only do we get these film simulations, but these simulations are built by the people that made the films to begin with. So you're getting something that's real from the company that makes them. I'm gonna go with Astia. I think we're ready to shoot already. Let's see, I've got this on manual. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up. Right now, the default is my thumb is controlling shutter speed. My index finger is on ISO. And then it looks like we have aperture controls right here on the lens itself. Very simple, so far, ergonomically, everything the way that this is set up is, is absolutely awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this down to F2.8. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna frame Lauren right in the highlight of the scene. So that's gonna kind of pull our attention into her. I'm also gonna lower the shutter speed down a bit right there, beautiful. We're set to uh, shade white balance, by the way. Unfortunately, at the time of releasing this video, we're probably not gonna get a chance to look at the actual raw files because Lightroom and editing apps don't support it yet. Okay, so let's shoot a few more images here. I'm gonna get in a little bit tighter. Beautiful. Turn and look down this way. There you go, right there. Love that. And then bring the eyes in the camera. So that little subtle adjustment, I want you guys to see because in the before shot, with her chin going this way, see most of our light is coming from the sky out to this right side, right? So all I'm doing is I'm having her bring her chin down towards this side. And you'll notice the before versus the after. We get a much more pleasing light. We get this beautiful, almost Rembrandt quality to the shadows and the fall off. It looks fantastic. So let's do this. I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna shoot at 1.7. Let's get a little gauge here on just depth. So let's bring this up. What I'm gonna do, Lauren, this go around is I'm gonna come off to this side a little bit and I'm gonna frame you. There's kind of like these nice highlights just directly behind you. So if you guys see from my angle, I always wanna keep Lauren in kind of a brighter spot of the frame, not always, but it's a simple compositional rule to keep our eyes focused in on our subject, right? So if I move towards this angle, 
you'll see that there's a nice highlight kind of right behind her that will, will pull us kind of like right into her. And we also get a nice little gauge of this background, the bokeh that we'll get off this lens. Beautiful. I love that. Okay, now we're gonna start testing this eye focus a bit and it's doing a good job. It's kind of sometimes tracking off the eye, but it's still right there on the face. I can choose my focus area and the focus mode. So I'm gonna actually go to single point. And let's see here. So right now it's set to multi-purpose. Ignore objects, track. Okay, so let's just leave it on multi-purpose. I'm gonna see if the spot focus is a little more accurate or... Okay, we have, I love these menu systems. Face, oh, there we go. Face and eye detection setting is off right now. So all we're gonna do is turn that on. We wanna run eye auto. And now let's go ahead and come back up. Yes, now face is going right to her. There we go. I love that. Oh, beautiful. Gorgeous. So I'm allowing these leaves to kind of come past Lauren a bit on each side. So we gotta, we kind of get a little more depth in the scene as we shoot into it. And she's also backlit by the sun. So what I'm gonna do now, if you guys watched the, the last video on cropping, is I wanna make sure that I don't crop it at kind of intermediate points, right? So I wanna crop at the thigh. The only issue is if I crop at the thigh, we're gonna be showing that cable. So look at this shot you're gonna see that cable cutting through the frame. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm just gonna step in a little bit further and we're gonna to go to a bit of a tighter shot right here. Beautiful. Yeah, the other thing that I love about putting her in a backdrop like this is we're playing into a couple different compositional rules. Not only is this backlit, right? We're kind of going with a symmetrical composition. We use the leaves to create more depth in the scene, so we're shooting shallow. But the other beautiful piece about this is that we have a uniform colored background. We have all these shapes and these leaves that kind of add this nice bit of just uniform colors that allows her dress and allows her outfit and everything about her skin tones to really pop out of the frame. This is a cool scene for many reasons. So the sun is behind us. Um, we have this nice kind of arch right here, this opening. So I'm actually gonna place Lauren slash Saran <laughs> deeper. So I want you to step in, ideally in a spot where we get a little bit of a hair light on you. So kind of go in a little bit further. And right there. Okay, so if you guys actually come to my side, you can see exactly what I'm talking about. The sun is kind of coming directly through this tree. And if I have Lauren step forward a little bit, we lose the hair light, see that? If she steps back a little bit, the hair light's right there. So I wanted to be right there because it kind of edges her out in this darker background. Now what I want to test out is a little bit of motion. So what we're gonna do is ramp up the shutter speed. I'm gonna bring the ISO up a bit. I'm gonna go to one 1,000th with ISO at, let's say 400. And I wanna start getting some shots that are in motion. But this first shot is actually really nice too. I feel like we should get this shot. <laughs> the trees are gonna frame Saran perfectly. And what we're gonna do is Saran, go with a stronger pose for this first shot. So kind of open out the legs a little bit and then scoot a little bit this way, right there. So if you guys notice, there's this highlight. I'm gonna show you the difference here. I could shoot this shot, and that looks nice. It looks, it looks really good. Um, or I can get a little bit down further. So remember, we keep talking about framing your subjects where the bright spot of the image is. And if I just kind of go down a little bit, I can frame Saran right there, perfect. Beautiful. And we get her framed right there in that highlight where her face is kind of right in front of the, the sky highlight. It just keeps your attention into the frame a little bit. We have this beautiful frame within a frame. This looks gorgeous. I know that this can shoot a fast frame rate. So let's see if we can figure this out. So right now, I'm gonna put it to, oh, there we go. So right now I was on drive. So there's drive right there. I'm gonna go to high speed burst. Oh my goodness. Mikey, are you ready for this? Yeah. <laughs> We're still in medium, so we should be okay here. Okay. So Lauren, you're gonna try and keep your feet kind of right where they're at and then do a full turn, okay? 
take one tiny step this way, right there. Okay, ready? <laughs> no, that's cute. I love that. Lauren, that looks so good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just start stepping in. I'm gonna shoot a couple different shots in this scene, kind of getting a, a few different angles. But what I love about this is if I now stand and I kind of have that hair light on Lauren, I can get her against a darker background and make the hair light pop a bit more. So let's do that. So Lauren, what I'm gonna have you do actually is, yes, stand right there. Okay, and now come up to this set of leaves right here, right there. Stand on that side of this set and kind of like reach through here. Can you bring it a little bit closer to your body, your hands? There. I love this, this light shape from right here is fantastic. Let me show you the difference. So Lauren, come over onto this side. So if you look, I like this angle a little bit better. And the reason why is because from this angle, we get more of a directional light from the sky right here. Whereas on this side, we get a bit more of a flat light. So I, I find the directional light to be far more interesting, even though the leaves are a little bit less consistent on this side. But what we can do is, Lauren, if you were to now turn and kind of face this way, there. Okay, so thoughts so far, it's an incredible camera. Would you agree? It is a, it is a fantastic camera. You know, I've shot a lot of medium format. Um, I'm not a huge fan of, of, say, medium format cameras because they do offer, they offer a ton of resolution, um, but they also have a lot of drawbacks in terms of like, they really slow down the shooting process and the creation process. Part of that is a good thing, um, but my point is, is that on this camera, I don't feel as much of that slow down. Um, it really feels like we're getting a great balance between you know, the mirrorless kind of speed of a, of a regular camera, but also getting the detail, resolution, the depth that we would get in medium format. The, the files, I mean, at least from what I'm seeing on the camera look incredible. I can't wait to see the raw files. Let's go to another scene and see what we get. Okay, we have magic right here. Literal magic. So look, these little, what are these? Sprigs? Weeds. <laughs> These weeds are being perfectly backlit. And knowing that I have a depth machine here, if these are in my foreground and they're backlit, they're gonna really brighten up and create a lot of uh, beautiful bokeh. We have a parking lot behind us. It's not gonna be too big of a deal. Again, we have the control of an 80 millimeter lens right here, right? So what I'm gonna do is have Lauren actually step in. Saran, step in. <laughs> Lauren, these stage names, they, they don't make sense. I'm just saying. Okay, so she's just gonna kind of lower herself down a little bit. And if you can go a little bit lower onto a knee, is that okay, are you comfortable? Okay. And I want her to scoot just a little bit this way. Now from my perspective, I'm actually framing her head against the, the mountain. So what you're gonna see is if I get too low, so the reason that you don't see a hair light is because we get too low, right? So watch this. Okay, if I get too low and I shoot the image, then what we end up getting is, uh, is, is the bright hair against a bright background and we lose it. But I can frame her right against the mountainside. Let me go ahead and actually get my correct exposure here. Beautiful. And that mountain does such a beautiful job of really making the catch light, the, the hair light, uh, really pop. Now you'll notice that we're getting a nice amount of light coming in. So not only are we getting this sky kind of filling light in, but we're also getting some fill from the ground itself. And because the ground has this lovely skin tone quality to it, it kind of adds a bit of warmth into the shot. All right, so Lauren and I are done in this spot. We're gonna head to downtown Laguna and shoot a few more images. All right, so we're here in downtown Laguna now, and I've placed Lauren against this wall for a couple different reasons. Lauren's done a wardrobe change, but now you'll notice that her outfit perfectly contrasts this wall. On top of that, if you actually look at this side, you'll notice that we have direct sunlight landing on this wall, which gives us that nice natural kind of push fill that we just get this beautiful soft light into the scene. So I'm gonna back up, and I want you guys to see the resolution on this resolution monster. So let's do this. I'm gonna shoot this at f2.8. We're gonna to go to one one thousand of a second. Let's go ahead and bring this up to full resolution now. I love it. 
any one of those images. You can just grab it and just zoom right on in. Now, Lauren, step forward right there. I want you to keep coming forward. So I'm going to bring you forward so that we light up. Your eyes are just going to light up the closer that you get to this thing, okay? We're going to stick this right around that same. Bring the arms across like this so we kind of get a narrowing point on the shoulders. I love that. This looks straight up like a studio now. So keep in mind, if you're shooting close up portraits at 100 megapixels, you're gonna need a little bit of retouch work, okay? Regardless. Oh my goodness, unless you're photographing Lauren, then you need none. Okay, so the entire reason I'm getting down low is, well, there's a couple reasons. I wanna give Lauren a sense of kind of presence over the frame, like she's gonna kind of stand over the frame. Lauren, you're gonna exaggerate the hip a little bit more. So kick the hip to the side, there you go. And now she's kind of looking down at the camera and Lauren, you're gonna tip the head back and then look down there. Kind of cocky, confident. And give me a little bit of space in the elbow. I love that. Okay, so here, I don't want to see that background at all. So I'm going to go ahead and widen this out to F17. We'll go ahead and lower the ISO. I love that. I'm going to get in tight. Okay, we're gonna test the bokeh sauce. This wall kind of has this like shine to it, right? The problem is if I shoot directly onto it, I don't really see that. So I'm gonna show you how big of a difference we can get by just taking an angle. So Lauren, can you have a seat right here? Perfect. And that looks fantastic. So what I'm gonna do is get down low and I'm gonna frame Lauren right against that wall. That's gorgeous. Right there. There it is. That's cute. Okay, we're gonna wait for the cars to leave. That's it. All right, I've shot enough on this guy to give you some initial thoughts. I'm gonna speak from the still side. If you look at the video specs, you'll actually find that this is a ridiculous cinema camera. It has so much to offer on that side. But my focus and my time with it has been still, so let's talk about that. I am gonna do a follow-up video to this. Uh, I'm gonna take this out. Before I have to give it to, I'm giving it to Paul Von Ritter next. So before I have to give it to him, I'm gonna actually take it out with my family, do a few more shots, and then when I can get the images into Lightroom and look at the RAW files, I'll do a follow-up video and tell you guys what I think about the RAW files and everything. But for now, let me give you some thoughts on the camera system itself. I dig it. Overall, I mean, just my baseline opinion is this is a camera from an artist's perspective that I would actually consider buying. It offers such a unique value proposition compared to other mirrorless cameras. Now in the past, I've shot quite a bit of medium format and the digital backs are very inconvenient. Lugging them around, using them, the way that the cameras work themselves really slow down the process. And it felt like I was giving up too much just simply for the depth, dynamic range, and detail. Now for some photographers, that made complete sense because that's all that they needed. But for me, I like the conveniences of DSLRs and now mirrorless. This camera kind of blends the best of both worlds where we have the medium format depth, the dynamic range, the detail, but then we're marrying this with a smaller format body. So we get the mirrorless kind of size. I mean, still it's a big camera because of the sensor itself but we're getting the convenience of mirrorless, better focus systems, better speed. We're getting five frames a second. So we're getting the best of both worlds on this side. On top of that, Fuji has built in all of the simulations into the camera. So I have like, I think there's something like close to 20 film simulations right in the camera, which are impressive. They are absolutely awesome. Like things that you would actually use. These aren't just digital filters. They're quality film simulations designed by the people that made them. Ergonomics are fantastic. I was able to just pull it out, start using it on the shoot, jump in and out of the menu system, change resolution, change settings, do whatever I needed without ever having to consult a manual or video or anything. Very simple, easy to use. So hands down, it's fantastic. The only note that I would give is don't expect the focus system on this guy to be able to keep up 
with let's say the latest greatest mirrorless camera. Like if you're comparing this to a Sony a7R 4 in terms of its focus speed, it's not there. But as far as a medium format camera, its focus system is better than anything else that I've used and it gets us very close to a very advanced mirrorless setup. Absolutely awesome camera, be sure to check it out. If y'all enjoyed, I'd love for you to subscribe to the channel. Comment below, let me know what you think about the camera, about the video, the images that we shot. Be sure to also follow Lauren and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.